Technology change is coming to transportation, whether we want it to or not. Future mobility will be altered in a big way by disruptive technologies, including autonomous vehicles. Fewer people are choosing to own and drive their own cars. More people are choosing to live downtown, and new forms of mobility have become more common. Sweeping social and cultural changes are occurring, especially in cities, which will need new approaches to planning for and meeting their transportation needs. While there are many disruptive changes on the horizon, five are poised to have the biggest influence on transportation. First is the rapid growth of shared mobility, or mobility as a service. Options like Uber and Lyft, they still represent only a few percent of travel today in most areas, but this is expected to increase exponentially. Second is the coming shift to electric vehicles. Battery costs are declining, but battery capacity is increasing. Electric vehicles have lower long-term operating costs and will have much longer operating life. This is great news for energy efficiency and greenhouse gas reductions, but trouble if the industry continues to rely on the gas tax for transportation funding. Bloomberg Energy estimates by 2040, a third of all vehicles on the road will be electric powered, and by 2050, perhaps as much as 50%. Third, and probably the biggest change, is the inevitable march toward autonomous vehicles. It's not a question of if we get there, but when and perhaps how. The Society of Automotive Engineers has established five levels of vehicle automation. The first two mostly involve operational and safety enhancements, such as adaptive cruise control and automatic braking. Level three involves some level of automated driving, but still assumes a driver will be able to take over if needed. Level 4 is the first level where vehicles will be able to drive themselves without a driver needed, operating in a predefined geofenced area that's been digitally mapped. Even with limited boundaries, it is at this point that autonomous vehicles can be used for low-cost, first-mile and last-mile transit service. Level 4 autonomous vehicles are expected to be commercially available sometime between 2020 and 2025. Level 5 is full driverless autonomy, anywhere and in all conditions. It will probably take somewhere between 15 and 30 years for this to be fully developed and deployed. But whenever we do get there, you can throw out most of what we know today about urban mobility. Number four is a product of the previous three changes, an upending of the economics of travel. The combined impact of driverless vehicles and the heavy shift to fully electric vehicles will dramatically bring down the cost of mobility as a service to a point where many folks will give up their personal cars. The net result, fewer cars, but probably more miles of travel. And finally, big data analytics represents the fifth major change. With most people using shared mobility services, computers will be better able to pair riders and direct vehicles to use the most efficient routes, optimizing the efficiency of our transportation systems. Let's look at these changes through the lens of the Jenkins family, with dad Nick, mom Susan, and their son Mike. In the autonomous age, the Jenkins family, and the rest of us as well, will probably have three choices. In option A, Susan, Nick, and Mike all have their own cars and make their own trips. In the morning, Nick and Susan drive separately to their jobs. And during the day, Mike makes a round trip to the mall. At the end of the day, Nick and Susan both drive home from work. And in total, the family travels about 50 miles. Option A will be the choice for people who like to drive or those who don't like to lose control. It'll also be preferential in rural areas. In option B, the Jenkins family buys one level five autonomous vehicle that replaces the three vehicles in their household, and it can serve the travel needs of everybody as it drives itself between trips. The single vehicle can take Nick to his job, drive itself back, to pick up Susan, and take her to her job and then the car returns home. Mike then takes the car over to the mall and back when he's done shopping. And at the end of the day, the vehicle heads over to pick up Nick at the office and swings by to pick up Susan and her job, then heads home with them both. It's a total of nine one-way trips, including three of them made by the empty vehicle itself. It's also a total of 75 miles, 50% more than when they had three separate vehicles in the house. And then there's option C. The Jenkins family gets rid of all their cars and relies exclusively on shared mobility services for all travel. In the morning, Nick and Susan both call up robo-taxis, which leave a holding area near where they live. The cars pick them up at home, drive them to their respective jobs, and leave for nearby points to pick up other passengers. During the day, Mike orders his own car to the mall.
When he's ready to come home, he calls another car to take him there. After work, Nick and Susan each call cars, which drive a few miles to pick him up and then take him home. One robo-taxi goes to pick up more travelers, while the other retires to the holding area. At the end of the day, the driverless mobility-as-a-service vehicles have traveled 65 miles, including 15 miles with nobody in the car. That's an increase of about 30% over option A. Bottom line, fewer vehicles but more miles. So which option will be the top choice? Well, eventually option C, because of the changing economics of shared mobility. Electric vehicles will reduce operating costs and increase vehicle life. In today's mobility-as-a-service business model, the driver's at least two-thirds of the cost. But the big change happens when we take the driver out of the car. The net effect of all this would be to reduce the typical cost of shared mobility from maybe $2.50 to $3 a mile to just $0.20 to $0.30 cents a mile. If it still costs you 50 to 65 cents a mile on your own car, including insurance, financing, and repairs, does it really make sense to buy one? These disruptive shifts in transportation have many potential implications on how we plan for transportation in the future. Imagine a future when, instead of 5 or 10 percent of people not owning a car in a city, it's 60 to 70 percent of the population. The majority of people would need to depend on a third-party service, and the distinction between transit-dependent and driving populations would truly blur. Travel providers will need to offer alternative service levels to compete, riding alone, pairing up with travelers, or using small group shared shuttles. With thousands of people sending travel requests at nearly the same time, computers will be able to easily match trips and offer the lowest cost options available. In cities, we probably won't need as much parking, especially in major employment centers. We'll probably still need some level of high capacity transit, but maybe shared mobility could meet the needs of the zero car households and some of the people who used to depend on transit. In the future, disruptive technology changes like autonomous vehicles will also have a heavy influence on what future transportation networks look like. They'll enable much closer vehicle spacing and narrower lane widths, effectively increasing the capacity of roadways and reducing congestion. Forecasting vehicle travel in this age will become much more difficult when we have empty vehicles traveling around. And we can't forget the impending demise of the gas tax. The rapid shift to electric vehicles will dictate greater use of road user fees and a big increase in tolling. But the new mobility raises new questions there as well. Will people still value time savings from toll roads if they can use their time to do other things? With autonomous vehicles, who'll make the decision to pay a toll? The system or the passenger? There's a lot of uncertainty about what mobility will look like in the future. It's important that we develop realistic plans and that we make the right investments today to support mobility of tomorrow. At CDM Smith, we're developing future mobility scenarios, alternative futures, if you will, for transportation. And we're working to adapt our travel models and analytical tools to help us give clients a better idea of what the autonomous mobility future means to their cities and regions. Change is coming to urban mobility. We need to anticipate it and adapt to it as we plan for the future.